guys it's your girl Layla Saad thank you for tuning in if this area looks familiar it's because I did my skincare video in this exact spot and this is our time but I'm a busy girl you know gotta do my content somehow gotta provide for you guys I'm here for you I thought really last minute I just thought it'd be a good idea um, to play a little game with you guys so the game is called Actually Curious. So I actually um, found this brand via another brand I was working for for a collab. They did a little interview and part of the interview was asking me questions from this game. Um, I thought it was so cute so I added it into my holiday gift guide and the company reached out to me and was like, do you want one? And I was like, absolutely. It's similar to like that uh, we are not really strangers idea where it asks questions and you play it and I don't know I just thought it'd be fun um, I played with my boyfriend so I know like some of the questions but I don't know I figured I'd just shuffle it out and just a way for you guys to get to know me a little bit more and I'm going to do it randomly, so hopefully I don't butcher these. When do you feel most secure? When do I feel most secure? So security is a big thing for me. Um, it's kind of like one of those like deep internal things that I'm like kind of always like searching for um, in the people around me and the places I am. I just like to feel safe. So when do I feel most secure? I feel most secure when I'm with people that I know have my back, that I can count on, um, that I can ask for help. That's like a huge thing for me because a lot of the times I'm in this mindset where I can do everything on my own and I can't and I need help and I need people to bring me back down to earth because my head is up in the clouds most of the time and I just I think I just feel secure with people that I feel can catch me if I fall does that make sense security in the people around me shuffle 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 name one thing that makes you nervous or uncomfortable and explain why um well honestly when it comes to that expressing my emotions like i'm not uh ex i'm not good at expressing my emotions like it's like pulling teeth and like once i open up like i'll ramble but like i could ramble for 40 minutes and you probably still won't actually understand what's what i'm thinking Cause I'm just like rambling and then I'm like, do I think that? I'm saying everything, I'm like, do I think that? Do I think that? Do I actually feel this way? Am I actually sad? Am I actually anxious? Am I actually nervous or am I just making this up? Like I freak out because I have no clue. I can't express my emotions. So when I have to have like serious conversations with people, I definitely get uncomfortable and nervous. It's not my forte. I wouldn't even say I'm not emotional to begin with, but also I don't think I'm like very good at understanding my emotions i feel like i'm in tune but i don't know i definitely overanalyze situations and whatnot so um i would say that expressing my emotions definitely makes me a little bit uncomfortable my camera's gonna die so i'm gonna change the battery i'm gonna be so mad because i was just recording that in the wrong setting so we are back in video mode all right would you prefer to live the remainder of your life with a 30-year-old mind or a 30-year-old body? 30-year-old body. For sure. Because I want to be able to explore and move and dance and work out and jump around forever. So that's how I feel. How does singing make you feel? Exactly. I, that's just like that, you know? I love singing. It's so fun. It's so joyous. Like there is nothing, when it comes to music, to, this is how I describe my relationship to music. 
You know when you see like a really cute puppy and you're like, oh my god, you're so cute. Like I just, I want to squeeze you. Like I can't express how much I love you. That's how I feel with music. I'm like, I just want to create you. Like I want to play you. I want to, I want to like, when I hear Stay by Post Malone, I'm like, I bought a guitar. I literally bought a guitar because of Stay by Post Malone because I just wanted to play it. I still haven't learned. But that's how much I like, I was like, I don't know what to do about the song. I love it so much. And singing is just like that. When a song is so good, when you're in the car and the windows are down and you're with friends and it's just like, ah, oh, that's how singing makes me feel. What makes you unique? I'm freaking screaming in my home all by myself. And <clears throat> what makes me unique? Um, I, I'm pretty lucky in the sense that, yes, I most certainly care what people think. No, I don't care enough what people think enough. Does that make sense? I still care. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I've gone through every phase of my life caring about what people think, changing who I am to fit into other people's boxes. That's caring what people think. But in the sense, I also like... I was trying, but I was also like, well, whatever, if it doesn't work. Like, I was half-assing it. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I was trying to fit in, but I was like, eh, whatever. But I'll do it, but I'm doing it, but eh. You know? Does that make sense? So I think, like, my ability to step outside of, like, the comfort zone of society helps me. And I'm just really, 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 really open-minded. Like, really open-minded. Like, the weirdest shit, and I'm like, yeah, like... That's creative. Like that's interesting. Like I can I can really get down like with anyone and anything in any situation um, and be like, okay, like I understand. Do you think, girl? Do you think about your environmental footprint? Why or why not? So I definitely do think about it. Like I'm not and I think I sell myself short because I follow a lot of people on Instagram that are like the most environmentally friendly sustainable human beings I've ever met and I'm like oh my god I should just do that but like I I can't like put myself in that box like I can't be like oh my god I'm so environmentally friendly I think about it I acknowledge it I make note of it in little ways I cut back where I can like I could do more um, but like I, you know, have a reusable water bottle, like I like to bring a reusable coffee cup, not right now because of COVID, um, like reusable straws, like little things like that. Like I prefer, like I hate when I order something from a company and it comes in like plastic wrap or styrofoam or anything like that. Like I just love when they have like compulsible packaging and like sustainable practices. I'm just now getting into, um, clothing and like the sustainability around that because I've always been really terrible with that. I have a shop shopping addiction. I buy cheap stuff from all these cheap sites that I wear once and I like, I just feel like I've been doing a really bad job my entire life. And now that I've learned, now that I know, like, what's that quote? When you know better, you do better. Now that I know that that's something like really crucial and is polluting our planet, I'm more conscious of it moving forward. And I literally, this is just like as of like last week. So, um, so I do think about it because it's important for our future. If everyone made small changes, it would make a big difference. That's why, you know, if someone's like, oh, you can't change the world, of course not. But small changes from everybody does change the world. When do you feel out of place? Oh, why does it make me feel sad? <laughs> I feel I don't know what made me feel emotional. I feel out of place in places where a lot of people have very deep connections, um, like with each other, like deep connections, not like they know each other and I don't, I thrive in an environment where like, drop me in like a party where I know nobody. That's like my dream, which is like, most people are like, oh my God, absolutely not. Like that's something that makes me unique. Like that. I would thrive in but being in like a place where like everyone around me is like really really close and I'm not I don't know how to explain it like when I feel like I'm unable to like make a deep connection with somebody 
and I feel like everyone else is like able to have really deep like conversations I feel like I'm not connecting with anybody and if I'm not like connecting with anybody then I feel out of place like I like making connections and if I'm not having like that connection with somebody and I'm not feeling that like pull to talk to somebody like them wanting to talk to me and then because it's both ways like someone could meet me and literally be like she sucks I don't want to talk to her maybe that's not what they're thinking or like maybe the conversation's just not flowing I like get really down if I can't connect with somebody because I think that I I normally do really well connecting with people so I feel super out of place when I can't form a connection with somebody which happens more often than like you might think being somebody who likes connections, sometimes it's really, really hard and I can feel very uncomfortable if I can't, like, almost penetrate somebody with a conversation. That sounded weird. <laughs> penetrate with your conversation. Oh, God. Describe one time you've judged someone based on a perceived difference. Um, so this one, I'm... I actually do, again, I feel pretty lucky because I did grow up in like a unique environment where I grew up around a lot of people who are a lot more well off than I was. But I had a single mother who owned her own catering business and like, but we lived in a rich town. So a lot of the people around me had a lot more money than me. Um, why I'm thankful for that is it put me on two sides of the spectrums where I could see both sides. I met people who were really well off, grew up really well off, who were so humble, so kind, so generous. And they're fantastic, super sweet, like very nice people. And then I also grew up in like an interesting household. So like um, my sister's transgender. So I grew up like kind of with like a, a different niche around me, like really from a very young age. Um, my dad's middle, middle Eastern and my mom's single mother. So we weren't really well off. And I always kind of gravitate to people who are like a little bit like unique, I don't know, add a little bit of spice into my life. Like they bring something cool to the table. I was like always really drawn to that. So obviously I've judged somebody before on a perceived difference. Um, I like nothing, not a specific moment is coming to my head. I can't think of a specific time. Um, Who's someone from your childhood who shaped who you are today and why? So obviously my mama. <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, I lost my mom when I was 18, so I'm 23. Um, she was a single mother, so my sole guardian. And like she was just the most consistent aspect in my life, the most cons consistent adult in my life. Um, and she was like obviously in hindsight like i look back and i'm like holy crap she was freaking amazing like so single mother i talked about this earlier single mother owned her own catering business so worked for herself had her own business like work like jumped through all these obstacles just to make this happen because this was like her passion and she loved to do it i didn't even realize like how hard that must have been and how she like kicked ass like owning your own business and being a single mom like you freaking go like supporting your kids like that's insane like you are a rock star and she always taught me like to be independent like that I don't I don't need anything in my life except to like be my best self she always encouraged me to sing and dance and express myself and you know she would always tell me how much she loved me and I felt very safe and I was just really really lucky to have somebody like that in my life. She's turned me into like an independent, authentic like human being who expresses herself and is like proud to be who I am and I don't know like just proving that you can do anything. That's my freaking mama so love you mama. Okay, I'll do two more. Choose one, time travel or eternal youth and why? Time travel, 100%. Eternal youth is morbid because who would want to live forever because then you have to see everyone around you die. Um, and especially at this rate, I don't want to know what this world is going to be like. <laughs> time travel, 110%. Where would I go? Not a question, I know. Um, probably... 
Hmm. 70s. I, feel, I would love to go to a disco where I'm roller skating. I'm like obsessed with rollerblading. Roller skating, rollerblading, I don't know. It's like a manifestation. Like it's literally on my mood board, my drawing board, whatever. Manifestation, vision board. This girl with like rollerblades on. Going down like Santa Monica Pier. I love those videos, those TikToks. You know those TikToks where they're like in the flare, the flare jeans and they're in their rollerblades and they're like listening to like Fleetwood Mac, that's the different TikTok I'm thinking of, but, but like, just under the palm trees, like a boardwalk. I've never rollerbladed a day in my life, but. <laughs> okay, last one. Let's make it a good one. Okay, I might have picked up two, but this was the best one, okay? What is guaranteed to bring you happiness? I like this one. Um, I believe that happiness is created from within. So being, oh, it's going to sound so cliche. If you are living for you and not for everybody else, if you're not living to please other people, if you're not living to, if you are able to curate a life that puts you first, like you're taking into account what's best for you through your entire life and you're taking care of yourself and you're being authentic, I feel like that's guaranteed to bring you happiness overall. When I say like put yourself first, like that's not being selfish either because putting yourself first could be taking care of somebody else. Taking into account what you love and being true to yourself. I just think that as long as you put yourself first, mentally, physically, emotionally, everything around you, the pieces will fall together. The people in your life will be happier, you'll be happier, you'll feel healthier, you know? So just don't forget to put yourself first. Take care of you, fill your cup first. Awesome, okay, that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope that was like not boring. Like I hope that was fun. I don't know. <laughs> um, so the game's called Actually Curious. Uh, it, I think it'd be such a cute little stocking stuffer. Um, they have one that's like a little bit more fun that I think like is like a little bit more lighthearted. This one has like a little bit more deeper questions. Um, they do talk a lot about like more environmental stuff and like um, privileges and they try to bring up like uncomfortable conversations and I just think it's really cool like such a fun way to kind of get to know people and get closer to people so thank you thank you for tuning in make sure I'll pack this up um, make sure you are subscribed if you like this video I really really appreciate it you da bomb why did I say that uh, <laughs> But yes, please make sure you like this video and follow me on Instagram at Layla Jane Saad. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>